Hiya then folks, welcome to Boating on a Budget with me, the tight Yorkshireman. Today's project is dealing with this cabinet. As I'm sure regular viewers will be aware, me and Dawn wrestled this off nuts and vaults about six or eight weeks ago with the intention of refitting it onto Leander Lady. Unfortunately, in between times, we were struck down with the dreaded lurg and then we had Christmas and New Year and I got far too many mince pies and turkey in my belly to worry about cabinets. But it's now time to crack back on and get this project underway again. This is a good sturdy cabinet. It's stamped on the back here with the initials WD, which we believe stands for War Department. It was obviously built quite a number of years ago using good solid timbers. Not like the sort of chipboard stuff that you get these days with the melamine facing on it. The unfortunate thing is, where we want it in our bathroom, it needs to tuck underneath the gunnel. At the minute, it's too tall and it's also too deep. So I'm going to have to chop it down height-wise and chop the depth down. I've had the tape measure out both in the boat and around the cupboard and I've got some rough ideas where I'm going to need to cut it, what I'm going to need to adjust and what I'm going to need to chop out so that we can get it to fit. I think the first job though is let's get this back panel off, the drawers out of the way and then from there we've got the main carcass and we can get cracking properly. Originally then, this was a writing desk, but we can get rid of that section. Rest assured, all sections like these pieces of wood and the hinges and latches and things, I will be keeping because they will come in handy for another project. As the writing desk opened, it pull on these levers and push these supports out. We want to keep that in there for decorative purposes, but I need to get rid of that. So if I just knock it back a little bit, I should be able to get into the back there and unscrew that fitting off there and release that. we've got it cut down I'm just double checking that we have got the right height there and that's about 74 centimeters sort of 29 inches which allowing for the fact I'm actually going to put a new top on there a nice decorative top that's still plenty to fit underneath the gunnels so that's perfect just how I wanted it the next job though is to deal with the depth of it at the moment it's about 15 inches deep and we need it nine and three quarter inches which is about 25 centimeters so I'm going to flip it on its side, mark that out, get the circular saw out and we'll whip that down to size.
it's now upside down. So this is the base that's inside the cupboard. To do the cut along there, I need to get rid of all this spare piece of plinth. So if I just cut through each side with the hand saw through the framework, it's got that started. Same again there. I can now use the hammer and chisel, just knock these spare bits of plinth off. go you will know it is one of my old chisels I'm using not a new one to do this sort of stuff obviously the circular saw won't get into those corners so basically I'm gonna have to cut part way along each side by hand and then I can just run the saw down the middle not taking much cutting, might as well do it all by hand. The only bits holding this back section on now are the runners where the drawers sat before, so I'll flip it over, we'll get those cut. Now looking at it from the back, you'll see these are the supports where the drawers run along. And once I cut through these, on each end and in the middle, there's going to be no support there for this drawer. So I'm going to have to build a new little bit of framework. I'll probably be able to use this piece of timber and put it upright at the back. We'll get it cut out first and then we'll have a look how we're going to deal with that. First off I'm going to cut these too far out and then I can put a straight edge across there and mark exactly where I do want them. Back section removed. First bit of recycling on this project then, straight away I am going to reuse the piece I've just cut off there. I'm going to use that lip there to sit under that section and then cut this to the right height so it adds a vertical support there to these drawer runners and then it'll make sure when there's some weight in those drawers they don't start to sag. Next one's a nice simple task, the shelf from inside, just going to measure that back eight and a half inches and cut that down. The final bit of construction then is looking at these drawers because they're obviously now far too deep to sit into that cupboard so they're going to need chopping down and then the backs are reattaching further down that way. I think now what I'm going to do is clear all this lot away and then I've got some room to work on there to do that. Cutting these drawers down then is going to be really straightforward and I'm just going to use the same techniques that I've used to cut the actual main cupboard down. Just going to measure back the right distance, mark it all the way around and then cut it with the saw.
I'm sure when I come to actually fit it into the boat, there'll be a few tweaks needed here and there. But basically, that's the construction side of it done. We've reduced the height, we've reduced the depth, and we've cut things like the shelves and the drawers down to make them fit as well. The one thing I've now got to concentrate on is the finish. Obviously, we want to keep like a nice rustic finish. At the end of the day, it's old timber. But it is looking a bit too rough and ready, just as it sits at the moment. So I think what I'm going to do is pop it in the boat, because it'll actually fit where it's going to go now. And leave it in there a day or two, because at the minute it is still really wet from obviously being sat outside. So we'll let it dry out and then we can have a good look and see exactly what we're going to do with it from there. We're now on to the following morning and it's been sat in the boat overnight and it's dried out quite nicely. Might still be just a little bit damp down in the corners and along this bottom, but I think it's certainly good enough for us to start working with. And as you'll see, I've got various products. We've got some acetone, oxalic acid, white spirits, I've got paint stripper and some bathroom cleaner and I've got various bits and bobs like some wire brush and stuff like that because what essentially I'm wanting to do is clean it I don't really want to start having to sand it or anything we want that rustic look I think first off then I'm going to give it a go with the acetone see if we can get these marks off it using that Before I give it its final clean and then apply the finish, I can attach this top that I've made. It's just using one of them old school desks, like I've used on a few other projects around the boat. Cut it down, give it a quick clean over. Again, don't want to go over the top with the cleaning and sanding, it's meant to be rustic. I've got the wax polish ready to finish it with, which I must say I'm going to use a slightly darker stain than I'd actually intended. But that's because some of these black marks that are on here aren't coming off quite as well as what I'd thought. The acetone's doing a great job and it has pulled a lot of it off, but it's also revealing that behind those marks, there is some damage to the timber. And I don't want to exaggerate that damage by continuing on with more chemicals or sanding or whatever. So I'm going to leave it at that basically, apart from a quick clean, with some oxalic acid. Basically, oxalic acid is made with rhubarb leaves, of all things, but what that does is it opens the grain and it pulls any bits of dirt and grime and marks that are in there and leaves it ready for this polish. So I'll crack on, get this on, and then we've got the final stage. I've used oxalic acid a few times on different projects that I've done, cleaning up different timbers. And it seems I've not given it the credit that I should have. Because if you look at that as it's just finishing drying, that's got more of those black marks out on its own than the acetone and white spirit and using wire wool and things did. So maybe I should have just gone straight in there with the oxalic acid. Brilliant little product, definitely recommend that. And it's nice and cheap, and it's made from rhubarb leaves. Nature's own cleaner. It does now mean as well that instead of having to go in with the really dark mahogany stain, I can revert back to the one that I wanted to use, which is just basically a dark oak wax polish. So I'm going to get some of that on there and we'll start seeing how it looks.
Oh, you will notice I've put the handles back on as well. I don't think you need to watch me do all this. Let's skip forward to when I've finished it. Well there we go folks, that's how it's looking after a couple of coats of wax. I think over the coming days I will add a further couple more coats of wax as well and I think it'll really just make it all pop and shine. The unfortunate thing is I'm now going to have to fit it in the bathroom and as you're probably well aware our bathroom's only really small and it's virtually impossible to film or get pictures in there. I will try though in a, in a vlog coming up to get a picture of it and just see how it looks once it's in place and it's all shined up properly after a couple more coats of wax. But I'm really happy with that. Hope you've enjoyed watching this video. I'm sure you've liked it, and I'm sure you're already subscribed to the channel, and you've dinged the little bell so you get notifications each time we put a video on. And each time we put a video on, that means we've done more work on our boat. Thanks for watching then, folks. See you all later.